Okay, everybody, the Battle Pass is out. There's a new Battle Pass now, and this Battle Pass actually has Evra in it. So what I wanna do is not only go over the Battle Pass and talk about Evra and whether or not she's worth it, but I also wanna talk about in the shop, there is a few additional packs being sold as well. I believe it's in the limited shop here. You can see Silence, Praise, Silence, Treasure. Basically, when they have a new hero come out, they come out with some new packs for sale. Now, let's go ahead and look at these right off the bat. $20 comes with a five-star chicken, enough diamonds to get yourself seven more of these. So it's basically 17 of these plus the five-star chicken. Then you have some jelly and the meal coupon. That's uh, better than any of the other deals. If you're trying to get a shard at a dollar each, that's about the closest you'll be able to get it. And then here is $50 for 30 shards with another 10 diamonds or 10 summoning crystals worth of diamonds. That's about 40 shards. And then you pay a cup or about five bucks each for each one of these pumpkins. So if you're asking me, if you're looking to well out and you're basically just trying to get summons, these packs are decent value and probably better than the other things on the store. Now, one of the things I wanna look at here is, let's talk about Ever a little bit, where I use her, where I think she's strong now. In particular, I don't have her all the way ascended yet and my glyphs aren't all the way completed with her because I haven't been using her as much in PVE. But let's talk about where I think she can be quite good, which is PVP. I have lost to this hero multiple times in PVP and she also has a very good pairing with people that pair with bonus attacks. I'm thinking people like Crazed Urzog, for instance, or Imogen. Let's talk about her abilities. If you look here at the passive, looks at this. Additional rage per valid hit on enemy, max four rage. Converts all the rage into a bonus attack with artillery support upon reaching max rage. Well, what is our artillery support? So artillery support is basically a smaller version of the alt. The alt does an AOE that does a percentage damage to all the enemies, and then you also get attack up. What happens when you hit max rage is you don't get the attack up, but you still get kind of an AOE that hits everybody. For this reason, she can be quite good because if you look at the way her other basics work here, 60% damage, 15% chance to apply its bleeding, but if you have attack up, launches a bonus attack with gunfire. This one, same type of thing. If you have attack, launches a bonus attack with gunfire. One does bleeding, one removes positive effects. So you can kind of choose which of the two you want to use. Now, if you wonder what gunfire is, deals 50% damage to an enemy and reduces all ability cool cooldowns by one turn, which is quite good in PvP um, as well, to be quite frank, because if you're going to be reducing your cooldowns, you're gonna be reducing how long it's gonna take for you to get your AOE again, and this can proc. And then if you look at the way the passive works in combination with if she ends up having a sense, and she can also apply defense down as well, so you can have a built-in defense down with her kit. Effectively, her gameplay loop works in one way, which is you AOE with the alt, then you're gonna basic attack if you wanna do DPS and bleeding over time, or if they have a buff you're trying to remove, you're gonna use the A2. This will then trigger additional rage procs, uh, which, or additional bonus attacks, which uh, procs additional rage, which procs additional bonus attacks, and all of the bonus attacks and everything give her rage again. So you can see how it's kind of a wombo combo. Now, if you're wondering about gear, um, if she is going first, meaning you want her to go first uh, in arena in particular, then you're gonna have to have enough speed on her, but that's not really how I think I would build her. The way I would build her is just as much attack as you can get her, considering she has S tier attack, she has very high base attack and can be a wonderful hero just to stack that kind of gear on her. So I'll show you the type of gear I'd be looking for, okay? I'm gonna move myself briefly here so it's easier to see the gear. So if you look here, like crit damage, crit rate, I'd be looking like something like that on the weapon. I'd be wanting something like this, attack percentage, crit damage, crit rate. Obviously I'm looking for attack percentage sets. I know this piece has crit rate, crit damage on it as well. So I'm gonna keep that one, even though it's not attack percentage set. Now I could go with like some speed boots here for arena. Again, I think I'm just looking for attack. This one's just got flat attack and attack. So I'm gonna be taking that. This ring here has crit damage with crit rate. And I knew I had the opportunity to get one more non-set bonus since I have one of the health ones there. And then I'm gonna be looking for attack with maybe some crit rate there. And then this is probably what I would be wearing on her. Now, that is gonna give me 93% crit rate, which by you know time I do the glyphs and everything is right about there. I would have enough attack damage itself, enough crit damage that I would do some bonus damage. I'm not really worried about the defense down. Now, abilities, 
I am slowly working on maxing out the abilities. I've got the ones I really care about, which is the cooldown reduction. And then this one just increases your chance for the bleed. So we'll go ahead and put that in there as well. And then this is where you could probably stop in terms of abilities, unless you just absolutely want the extra little bit of damage, feel free to do so. Now, Ascensions, I don't think are required for her to be good. Let's go ahead and take a peek at her in some PVP here. You can see I was not doing that much PVP last time, so we're gonna be reset back to gold. We'll go ahead and attack one of these here. We're gonna put her in with some speed. Let's go ahead and put in Windstrex just for the boosty with the speed. And then in order to get a fair shake of her, let's put her in by herself. So. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this on auto so you can see how she handles herself. And you'll get an idea of where exactly you'd be using her. Basically any place that is either water-based. So if you're about to go against a PVP matchup and they have water-based heroes and you're like, okay, like this one has Kyle and two greens. Like, well, this might be a good spot. In PVE, she can be quite good because she can remove positive effects. So she can even be good in uh, the Holy Dungeon, for instance, where you have to remove a positive effect in order to not get wiped. She can be all right in clearing blue waves, for instance, the Queen Dungeon, but Zadlux is kind of overshadowing her in terms of those dungeons, which is why you don't really hear about her too much in like Queen or anything like that, because we have a Zadlux that is free to play that can go through and just gut everybody. Now, it is, how to say a more meta still uh, with the other type of team comp. So the type of team comp I'm going against now where it's 100% tanky is in fact the meta. And the only reason that ever might be able to slide in there on top of having really good damage and being strong affinity against a lot of the meta heroes, but she also can remove positive effects, which is a good portion of what you can see right here is going on quite a bit of positive effects. Now she only removes one on one target. So that can be unfortunate. But that's basically how the hero works. I think she's an all right hero, pretty decent DPS, probably a decent hero to have into the battle pass. If you're wondering my review of her, I give her like a seven out of the 10. I like her a lot. She is usable in some places. She is not useless. She is not something you have to feel bad about in terms of actually uh, putting resources into. And she might help you through some content as well until you get other heroes that are gonna do basically what she does but better. That's just one man's opinion. That doesn't also include the rest of the things that we could talk about within the battle pass. If we actually go and look at the battle pass for your $10, I believe it is, you're gonna be getting quite a bit of value. Here we get a look at the different offers available. You can pay the elite, which is $10, which unlocks it. The battle pass plus is just gonna give you 20 season levels. I don't believe the plus 20 season levels is worth it. If you look at the challenge quest, there are plenty of challenges that you're gonna to want to do anyway and doing these challenges will give you experience towards the pass. I've never not been able to hit the pass and have plenty of time left over. So just keep that in mind as you're debating it. I myself will be paying the $10 to purchase the pass. If anything, it's worth it just for the ascension as I am a well. If this helped at all, consider liking or subscribing and checking out my other Awaken Chaos videos.